Don't Be Fooled by Jake Lever. His looks belie an inner fight that's already stamped him as a fierce competitor who hates being beaten. As the club rebuilds its defence, Jake wants to cement his place at the Crows for the next decade. Away from football, the 20-year-old has a softer side, particularly when it comes to his best mate. Hey, come on. Come here. So I've got a chocolate lab. Um, his name's Nate. Uh, he's five months old at the moment, so he's just a little puppy. It's been about three months, I think, we've had him now. He's just been fantastic. Just love having the company. Big fist away by the lever. The most important thing for me when I go out and play just to be competitive because if you're competitive you're, you're always in with a shot to, you know, whether it's a marking contest or anything like that, um, you're always in, in with a shot to win it so I think that's really important. You could ask Daniel Talia who's probably one of the best key defenders in the competition um, and his game would be very much on just competing and, um, you know, trying to win or even every contest. He's kicked the goal already, tough one here, how hard was that? I think a mean streak is something that um, I had before I started boxing, um, but then it just, you know, throughout boxing, um, once you get in the ring a little bit, it, it sort of develops even more. Um, I think every person's goal is to play every game, and I think I had a pretty good foundation year last year, sort of found my feet in the first year, and obviously I signed a, a one-year extension last year. Love my time here, love Adelaide. Um, I love the beach where I'm living at the moment, so it's just, yeah, it's great. Another defender building a big reputation is Rory Laird. The runner-up in last year's Club Champion Award took time out with Brody Smith, thanks to Aussie Ripper Roasts. Rory Laird, welcome to the second edition of the Ripper Roast. Thanks for having me on, Brody. Now, um, we're going to talk a bit of footy first. Last year, um, came out of the woodwork a bit. All Australian, almost. Talk us through last year. Uh, yeah, real consistent year for me. Obviously, a big improvement in my game. Knew how to, you know, get up each week professionally with my recovery, etc. Sort of stuck onto Danny Tully with that, and um, yeah, sort of worked out for me pretty well. Yep. And uh, second in the BNF. Uh, we won't mention who to, but they're no longer here. So, a few rumours around the club. You think you're number one? <laughs> Uh, some people put words in my mouth, I dare say. Um, but yeah, it's obviously a good result for me personally. But um, yeah, obviously a good year for the team as well. All right, we'll go to off field. Okay. Just walk us through some of your hobbies. What do you like to do away from the club? Uh, I'm a big uh, sports fan, NFL, NBA. I always see a couple of those with you over in the States. Uh, we need to touch on the basketball. We got um, Rick Henderson's sourced question from outside Can you dunk? Uh, yes, I can dunk. I can dunk with a tennis ball. <laughs> 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 I'm yet to prove the basketball, but I can dunk with a tennis ball. Yeah, just keeping on the off-field theme, single? Yes. Are you single? Yeah, I'll ask questions, mate. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, definitely single? Yes. 100%. 100%. Yep. Okay. Now, um, nicknames? Yeah, I've got a few. Off the top of my head, I've got Pult, Pultman, Pulty, Deskman, DO5, Decides, Dos, Dosser, Dossierge. <laughs> Yes. Any more? I think you've got most of them covered. There's about 10 there. I don't think I've ever been called Rory since I've got here, so Lady's obviously Lady. Um, desk man, because people think I'm short and kind of wide. <laughs> Look like a desk. <laughs> Look like a desk. <laughs> Look like a desk. <laughs> it's a shocker. A teaching background can be a handy asset when coaching young players in the finer points of AFL football. Paul Thomas joined the club this year as a development coach after a distinguished career with Central District interrupted by a short stint at Essendon. In this segment, Under the Coach's Roof, brought to you by Revolution Roofing, Paul discusses the challenges in fast-tracking the Crows' next generation. Six months in, um, it's been really good. Really enjoyed uh, learning a lot about Don Pike, his game plan, and working with James Pozzadley and, and uh, educating the defenders to execute the game plan from that point of view. Coming from teaching into coaching, sort of uh, they're one and the same. Lots of the coaching uh, development comes from sort of what they're doing in teacher development and vice versa. So um, being in a phys ed and health background, sort of try to draw on some of those experiences. Um, different ways to engage different 
people because we all learn differently, different uh, learning styles. I guess coaching is a lot about developing relationships um, as well as knowing the content and that's what teaching is. So the, the really good teachers that you've ever had through school generally know what they're talking about but also able to relate um, to the, the people within their classroom. So um, definitely have a, a, an advantage about spending 10 years learning about yourself as a teacher and how you best get your message across uh, has definitely helped as well. Really lucky I went to Henley. Uh, at Trinity I taught a, a reception to year 10 school, so Henley I worked with the year 11s and 12s and definitely the transition from teaching uh, adult learners at year 11 and 12 to uh, young adult footballers here has um, been sort of one and the same, it's been really helpful.